<laughs> All I've been blessed with in my life There was an emptiness in me I was in prison by the power of gold But with one kind touch you set me free So let the world stop turning Let the sun stop burning Let them tell me love's not worth going through Cause if it all falls apart I will know deep in my heart The only dream that mattered has come true In this life I was loved by you For every mountain I have climbed Every raging River cross. You were the treasure that I long to find. Without your love, I would be lost. So let the world stop turning. Let the sun stop burning. Let them tell me love's not worth going through. Cause if it all falls apart I will know deep in my heart The only dream that mattered has come true In this life I was loved by you In this life Lord, I was loved by you. Okay, I'm out of here. No, no. I want, no, to, no. Do <laughs> I want to introduce yourself. You My know. name is Kahu Lucky for my Kai Kahu Manu. I'm the senior pastor of Church on the Go, but I'm a descendant of Queen Kahu Manu, King Kamehameha's favorite wife. He had many wives, but his favorite wife was Queen Kahu Manu. They never had any children together, so she, Hanai, adopted two girls from her birthplace here in Hana. One of those girls is my great-great-grandmother. But because God is the king of kings, he chose Kamehameha to be a king of Hawaii, to have our people stop fighting each other and come together in unity so we can be able to stand together. Because the word said, if there be division in the house, it cannot stand. So we need to all worry. But having the struggles being raised up in a religious organization, my great great grandfather gave the church, St. Teresa Church, Catholic Church down in Kihei, the property that they built the St. Teresa Church there. We was raised in the church as altar boy. But I didn't ever knew who God was. Just went through all the outward appearance of godliness and denying the power of God. And at nine years old, I grew up as an alcoholic because all my family, my grandmother had nine children. And we always would get together, play music and party and drink. And nine years old, I was an alcoholic. Then when we went to the war, I graduated in 1970, went to the war there in Vietnam. I didn't even know what PTSD, post-traumatic stress was about. And when I came back, uh, I started growing pakalolo, marijuana, and would be stoned out of my mind going to church. And I ended up homeless after being married to my wife who never had no place, just drinking, drugging. And I ended up uh, getting busted for 870 marijuana plants on great grandpa land. And the uh, judge, for those of us, gave me a five year uh, sentence 
and uh, because of my first offense, he put me on probation for five years. But almost uh, four and a half years later, I didn't finish it. They set me up to an undercover cop and to go get some marijuana for this undercover cop that asked me, Lucky, you know, you know anybody get marijuana, Pakalolo? I said, yeah. So when I went to get it, I gave it to him, took the money, give to my friend. The cops surrounded me and ended up getting arrested. Went back to Judge Cadoza and he said, since you didn't finish your probation five years, I'm going to sentence you. They sentenced me 50 years. But because of the pastor, Hopai, Clement Hopai, that took care of my wife and I when we were homeless, he ministered and planted the seed of God's word and prayed for me. Because even though going to church, people can have an outward appearance of godliness, but if you deny the power of God, that beloved, you need to know, don't you know you're the temple of God and the spirit of God needs to dwell within you. Book of Revelation said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and him with me. But I thought I could hide from everyone just playing Hawaiian music and worshiping God. But once you get caught up in the drug addiction, you're out of control. And in that prison cell, looking at 50 years of my life, maximum, 10 years minimum, I got on my knees and I said, Lord, if you can use somebody as stupid as me, get me the hell out of this cell, I will serve you. Instead of 10 years minimum, 22 months later, after I finished my seminary course of Church of God, the Lord opened the door for me. And what are the chances I would become the head bishop, senior pastor of Harvest Chapel Church of God there in Lahaina on Prison Street? You see, beloved, God gonna get our attention and he knows how to do it because he did it with Jonah who didn't want to fulfill God's will to preach. And when the storm came, Jonah said, this storm is because of me. If you want the storm to stop, get rid of me. And they threw him overboard. What are the chances that big whale fish would swallow him until he came to himself and then spew him out where God wanted him to be? Well, now I'm a prison chaplain that God opened the door for me to go back into the penitentiaries and minister the word of God to those that I can relate to. And I'm believing God love the world. Why would he choose somebody like me to preach? Now I've traveled all over the world after 20,000 weddings. I was chosen to have God send me to do the modern family TV show Hawaii Vacation here at Wailea. And that old actor guy, Al Bundy, he said, Lucky, you wanna do a lot of weddings? Just be funny. I said, you're a funny guy. Now after 20,000 weddings, even the owner of the Little White Wedding Chapel there in Las Vegas, Charlotte Richards, she wanted me to come and do a wedding at her chapel in Las Vegas because her chapel was chosen by Good Morning America. And so she flew me there. And she got like five chapels on a drive through about eight ministers in black robes. I was the only Hawaiian blowing the conch shell, chanting Hawaiian, playing the ukulele. And uh, when my mom passed, Charlotte Richards came and she said, Lucky, don't worry, your mom is now with your father that saved them by his grace that saved you. And now she said, don't worry about it. I will be your mother. What are the chances God would use a holy white woman to be my mom? Because our father, it don't matter. Not only black lives matter, all lives matter. And so I'm thankful that God now helped giving me this property to still house our homeless families. And we just took in another homeless girl with a two-year-old baby sleeping because they kicked her out of the shelter. And now the Lord gave me a camper trailer that we housing these families here on this property that now we own because God owns everything. And when you obey the Lord's word as it is written, my son, all that I have is yours. I didn't have nothing growing up. 
always poor. My dad, I watched him steal a can of Spam because we didn't have no food. But today, God has blessed my life so much that now I'm feeding the poor. And after now 25 years, we've been doing a Christmas block party for the homeless families. Last year, we had over 450 children, homeless families, women, men. We feed them and then we give the children free gifts, toys. Now all the biker clubs here in Maui, because I'm a president of the Sons of God Motorcycle Ministry, and now they've been coming and every club buys a brand new bicycle as a grand prize for all the homeless kids that has a ticket. I'm thankful that God has even considered using someone like me that I never ever thought that he would ever want to have a fool like me because as it is written the fool said in his heart there is no God well I'm here to tell you there is a God that loved you who loved me that chose me to minister to those that no one loves except God and he said if you love me then feed my sheep and now he's got sheep and goats helping us clean up all the land and planting all the food so we just gave them that's the jazzy and dr lola from fresh papaya and dragon fruit that now the hawaiians we don't have to go ahead and go to the supermarkets because we never had no food land safe for a time supermarket growing up here grandma said you want to eat then dig the hole, plant the food. And now I tell our people, we gotta go back to our ancestor ways because if the storm hits us like Puerto Rico, now what the hell are we gonna do? It's sad that 80% of the food comes from the mainland. And we need to know that when we were here, our ancestors, we never had none of these Burger King, McDonald's. We grew everything that God blessed. O earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Blessed be the fruit of the ground. So I'm thankful that I had the opportunity meeting Pastor Jazzy and Dr. Lola. Because it wasn't for my daughter, Kehau, that we took care of her. And she was the secretary of our church ministry. And these are her friends. So with that said, remember, a lot of the theorists said this means shaka, hang loose, brother. But for us Hawaiians, this sign means aloha. And aloha means always love over hate. Always. No more Hawaiians, no more aloha. But no more aloha. God, no more love. God love you, and so do we. Till then, we look forward to seeing you. In Jesus' name, aloha. Okay. Baby, come. So, Papa, don't go. I want you to talk about the cap and the. They're still recording, still recording. Ah. The cap and the. And this, now again, in this video. The cap. Okay. Talk about this cap. Um, so, tell us the story oh. about it behind this cap. This hat mm -hmm. is a coconut hat. My father used to uh, make it to teach. That's the tree behind me, the coconut tree that we make the mm -hmm. coconut hat and baskets from. And. This, this pukui nut that uh, Pastor Jazzy, the Lord told me, give him this. The tree is down here. And when we were young and we were sick, our Nakupuna's ancestors, they would take the green pukui nut, they chop it in half, and then they put the sap on the tongue so whatever was ailing us would heal us. Second signification for pukui nut, when it was dried, we'd mash it. And that's how we had the oil to light the holly, the house. Third signification for kukui knot was also in dry, we chop it up and then we lomi, we mix it with raw fish. We mm. call it inamona, good to eat. So here's the manao. If people are hungry, you feed them. And if they're in darkness, it's you that the Lord said, let your light shine so they can see. And if you seek, and those that God's chosen to be the light of the world should have the word of God that he sent his word and healed them. 
and that's what God called us to do because after 20,000 weddings, a couple that I married, they came back to have me renew their vows and my wife said, Reverend, can you play for my husband? He was diagnosed with cancer. Doctor said he's not going to make it. So after I prayed over him, they sent me a letter. I said, Reverend, thank you. The cancer is gone. I said, it's God that's here that don't want anyone not to know what he is. For as it is written, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And God wants to heal everyone. And that's why he chose us. That now my CD, he sent his word and healed them, is now going all over. And Billy was supposed to die, but God had me, because his son called me and said, Papa, the doctor said, Dad, it's not going to make it. And Mom, his ex-wife and sister said, pull the plug. So when he called me to come and pray, I went to the hospital, I laid my hands on him, I prayed, and then I told the nurse, do you have a CD player? She said, yes, Reverend, why? I said, play this CD, it's all scripture reference to healing. Well, one hour later, his son called me and said, Papa, Dad's alive. I said, no, oh, God's alive. And today, that's his testimony sharing, because he thought when he heard my voice and the words that were coming, that I was speaking, he thought I was doing his funeral celebration of life service. But I just was fulfilling God's will because that CD now, after sheltering a homeless individual, he went to college and became very smart in technology. And he made that CD. All he said, Papa, all you got to do is speak into the computer and I'll record it. And today the CD is going all over the world because God wants people to hear what thus said the Lord. Amen. So with that said, now if you look, this is the seashell that we make. It's a fisherman hook because he's a fisher of men. Hallelujah. And so am I. I think my hook is bigger though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, God bless. Papa, tell us Aloha. how you met Billy. How you met Billy, Big Billy. Well, I was placed in the same cell when the judge sentenced me 50 years. And what are the chances God would put me in that cell with a criminal like Billy Hemsley? But it's not who we choose, it's who God has chosen us to be with. Because if it wasn't for me in that cell to pray for Billy and plant the seed of God's word, Billy would never have believed in a God that opened the doors. And what are the chances he would end up in Lahaina with his wife, Makana? And one day, Makana came to the church and she told Billy, Billy, you ought to come see this pastor. And when Billy came to the church, he went back. He told her, that's my friend. And Makana, his wife said, that's not your friend, that's the pastor. He said, no, that's the guy that was in the same cell in prison with me. He said, no way, he wasn't in prison. Oh, yeah. See, don't matter where God sends you. His plan is where you need to obey that God said, go you out and preach to everyone. For as it is written again, I sought for a man to make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me and pray for the land, for the people, so they don't get destroyed. And today I'm praying for everybody, whether it be now been chosen by God to do the new mayor, Mike Victorino, wanted me to do his inauguration. And I told him, Mayor, you have the Catholic priest, you have the church bishop, you had the ministers, kahooks from the Hawaiian churches. And he looked at me, he said, Reverend Lucky, I want you. I said, well, it's God that chose me because who would ever want an ex felon Well, when you read the word, why would God choose Joseph I to give him a vision and have his brothers hate him because they didn't believe that God would choose him. And even when he was locked up in prison, God gave him a word. And that individual that he shared what God told him, to tell him what's gonna happen. He shared with the Pharaoh. And when he shared with Pharaoh, God opened the door and let Joseph out. And Pharaoh said, Joseph, because God has given you this vision to share with me, I'm gonna put you in charge of all the land and if it wasn't for God choosing Joseph of the brothers that hated him 
they would have died too because there is no food except what God gave Joseph to plant. And now here's another ex-felon planting all the food and feeding all our homeless families to have them acknowledge God because he's the one that brings the increase for everyone, including me. So with that said, God bless. Sorry, it's getting too hot for me. <laughs> and um, I'm already battling with the heat. Can you close with a song for us, Papa? Oh.